Hey, what's up? Pixelflux here, and today we're gonna be editing a photographic RAW file, uh, which I took on my trip to London uh, a couple of months ago. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I quite frankly miss London. It's a beautiful city, uh, vibrant, beautiful architecture, beautiful landmarks. And I thought, what better way to uh, pay homage to uh, London than to make a tutorial um, featuring some of its landmarks. Um, so today's picture is going to be this uh, tower from the Tower Bridge. And um, I've got quite a few more shots and uh, a couple of ones that I've edited during my free time were um, this one. And um, this this night shot, which which was actually handheld as well, and um, this one's this uh, shot of Westminster and the uh, Parliament House. Uh, but today we're gonna focus on this one, and uh, I'm gonna be doing it in Photoshop because um, I don't, just don't want to waste Lightroom's power, or whatever you know, um, for just a single picture. It's just easier to pull it in Photoshop. But exactly the same sliders are going to be available in Lightroom, so, you know, anything I do here, you can just follow along. And um, if you use something else, um, like, you know, another raw editing software, then that's absolutely fine. You'll have pretty similar stuff there anyway, so I'm sure you can follow along. Um, so anyway, that's the raw file, and um, as you can see, I've um, kind of uh, shot for highlights, and then I'll be able to pull the shadows back in post. Um, the camera I took it with was the Canon 5D Mark III, which is my workhorse camera, and uh, the lens was just a general walk-around 24-105 f4L IS USM. Uh, I quite recommend that lens. It's it's not the sharpest lens and you know stuff like that, but it's it's really nice in in a way that it has image stabilization in it, so you can kind of take slower shutter speed shots. And um, actually, um, all of these shots were taken with that same lens, and uh, you know I can't really fold the sharpness, and especially handheld at night with relatively low noise. So uh, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, and the zoom range is just really good. Um, for walking around and just taking some pictures, and, you know, whatever. So, let's start with the uh, raw file, and straight away I'm gonna pull back the highlights all the way down because I want as much detail as possible in the clouds. And um, they'll start looking kind of dull and uh, gray, but we'll rectify that later, so, you know, just follow along and you'll see what I'm doing. Um, I want to pull the shadows up, so that's what I'm gonna do, and that's as far as I can go. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling the exposure because I know I've got that detail there and I just want to brighten up the whole thing. So I'm just gonna pull the exposure right to the uh, left side and see. Looks pretty alright, but now you see we're starting to lose that cloud detail back again. So what I can do is just pull the whites back and that's gonna clear that. So we can just play along with the exposure. I think that's about it. And you'll start noticing that it's kind of started lacking um, contrast. If I have a look at the previous image, um, you know, there's contrast and there's kind of... It, it looks HDR-ish now and I promise uh, that's not going to be the end result. So, next up, clarity. I always like to add a little bit of clarity to my images because it just makes textures pop. Um, blacks, let's introduce a little bit of black into the image. So basically what that's gonna do is just kind of, you know, introduce more or less dark. So let's keep that there. Uh, next up I'm gonna sort out the sky. So I'm gonna go straight into hue light, uh, hue lightness and saturation. And in saturation I like my skies blue, so that's where they're going. And straight away you see that makes a massive difference to the shot. Before, after, that's what I like. Um, next up, the building itself is a little bit orangish, so I'm gonna push the oranges and the yellows towards a more saturated level. And uh, I can I can actually play with this a bit better, and I can go into the luminance here and um, just push the yellows and the oranges up a bit. So as you can see. It gives my tower a lighter appearance. So we're just going to compensate with the saturation for the color loss. So straight away that looks much better now. Um, 
I can actually go in and play with the aquas as well. That's going to change that bridge structure there because it's pretty cyan. So as you can see, if I play around with these, um, it should mostly affect those areas, but it does affect the sky a little bit as well. So let's leave it quite saturated. Um, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let's see if reds do anything. No, they don't, because we don't have reds. Um, I was actually expecting it to do a little bit to the house, but uh, we don't have any reddish shadows in there. So, that looks pretty good. Um, next up, we can actually introduce a little bit of vibrance into this. There we go. Um, I might actually push the exposure up a little bit. Let's see, that looks... That's pretty good. I'm just looking at the histogram here, so I'm not blowing any highlights, and uh, I don't really need really dark shadows there. So I'm pretty. I'm keeping everything above fifty percent here in this shot. So um, next up, I will introduce a little bit of vignetting because I like my lens vignetting, and it just helps it kind of centralize your viewers' eyes into. Uh, into the photo. So uh, give it quite strong vignetting. I'm actually going to round it off a little bit better, like so, and uh, play with the highlight setting to recover a little bit of that sky cloud detail. So that luminance, we need it. So we're recovering that with the highlight slider there. So that's pretty good. Um, let's see what else we can do. Um, do, 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 do. Looks okay. So we can go into the tone mapping, and the tone mapping is basically going to be kind of like curves adjustments in Photoshop, which again you can do later, or you can do now. This actually uh, mines the raw capabilities as well. So if I'm increasing the lights and the shadows and whatever, it's actually going to pull the data from the raw file, and it's not actually doing this as a post effect which sometimes I like doing in post because it flattens the image and I don't have to worry about blowing the highlights as much as I would at this point. So I think I'm probably going to leave it for that stage. Um, looking at the uh, before and after, we see quite a big change there. And as you can see, it's actually applying a profile correction there. Um, and that's because I've got it automatically enabled as a default. So. Um, that's that. Um, I think I can actually remove the distortion correction because I like to see more of my photo and the distortion is not really that noticeable anyway. So I think I'm going to have that. Looks pretty good. And um, yeah, I think that's about it for it. I think the yellow is maybe a little bit overexposed. So I'm going to go back into the uh, um, HSL and... Uh, let's see, I need the luminance. Let's pull back the luminance and just increase. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to say open the image because I'm going to do my final adjustments in Photoshop. I'm not going to sharpen in Photoshop. Um, uh, sorry, in the camera raw because quite frankly I don't like doing that. Um, as far as noise goes... What I could actually probably do is um, if I go into the uh, camera raw, I should actually be able to denoise it a little bit better as well. So let's see. I'm going to give it a full color denoising because um, usually that doesn't lose you as much detail. So anything up anything up to 50% is good. Anything above is just kind of an overkill, but you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't lose you as much detail in most of the shots. Um, luminance noise. I think that's about all right. It's not as much as I would have expected. So I'm going to say okay to that. Boom, done. So next up, I'm just going to apply a simple curves adjustment. Let's keep it as a separate layer so I can just a layer. And then I just give it a little bit of contrast. So just a slight 
very, very fine um, S-curve. It just makes it pop a little bit more. So that's that. And um, in the image there, I see a helicopter. So I'm just going to quickly erase it using the um, patch tool. Oops, wrong layer. So I'm going to use, I think, that area. There we go. Helicopter is gone. So what else? What else? What else? Well, we can probably get rid of the dirt as well. So if we can just clone stuff, just to heal it out. That's pretty good. And then what I will do is I will apply some sharpening. What I do like to do is sharpen my images in post, as in like in Photoshop, um, as opposed to Adobe Camera Raw or uh, Lightroom, because I just feel like this particular sharpening filter that I use just gives it a little bit more detail. Um, and that filter is going to be uh, Smart Sharpen. It's a really, really good filter and um, I just use it for all my sharpening needs from now on. Um, if I'm doing a load of photos for like a client or something and you know if I've got like 100, 200 location shots to churn out for like a brochure or something, I will not bother with this. But if I can do um, for like finer detail work, then I will. Um, so usually my settings for full resolution photos are going to be about a pixel and a half. Um, it does increase your noise, as you can see from, say, that area there. Um, I can actually just have it there. So that area there it increases your noise, but you can kind of counter the noise um, for that sharpness there. And I sharpen for quite a lot as well. So this is the before and that's the after. So for full resolution photos, I usually use something like a pixel to two pixels. Um, for something like screen resized images at 2400 by 1600, I would use half a pixel. And that gives me really good sharpening. So these are the settings I'm going to keep. And that's about it, I think. It was quite simple. Um, I'm not worrying about the noise too much because this particular image is not going to be printed. Um, and you know, for the tutorial purposes, that's going to be fine. But I do believe that I've actually denoised it fairly well um, in the uh, original. Yeah, it looks about the same. Yeah, it looks about the same. Anyway, so that's basically how you get from a really dark and crappy and moody image to this beautiful work of art, which you can now print or display or whatever, or just hang it on your wall and um, remind yourself of how great London is. So uh, that's that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video. Uh, I will be making more videos like this in the future, so please do subscribe and that helps us make more videos. Um, like the video if you've liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Um, it helps me, you know, decide what kind of content you like. Um, also, the comment section down below is always open for you if you've got any suggestions, comments, questions, anything like that. I do read every one of them and I do try to reply um, as quickly as possible with, you know, uh, reasonable data, you know, whatever. So if you've got a question, you know, you can just ping, ping over um, a comment there. Actually, uh, let's have a look. I've just noticed something. We don't like that plane. It's probably going from Heathrow. Oops. What the hell was that? Okay, just get rid of that. There we go. Boom, that's finished now. There we go. So, yeah. Like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, and we will see you next time.